Hey everybody, it's Evan here at Method, and this time's uh, Method Cast Quickie is going to be on how to clean up a scan and get it ready for a presentation. All right, so a lot of times we're sketching in sketchbooks, and and we want to tell a story when it comes time to do the presentation of how we got from point A to point B. And you know, a lot of times point A at the inception of the project, it is real loose uh, sketches in our sketchbook or on some trace or whatever. And if you want to get those into a presentation format, you need to do some cleanup on those. Maybe you need to crop them down and, and make them black and white and just get them exactly how you want them to look so that they're really crisp and clean. What I like to do is, uh, first you've got to start off and get that thing scanned in. And in the last method cast, I showed you how to de-skew an image. Well, this time we're going to start with that image again and, and work on it from here. So the first thing is getting it into the computer and you want to use a flatbed scanner if you can and if you don't have access to one you want to use a camera or you know even your cell phone camera if you've got a a nice camera in your cell phone to take a good picture do that and the key is the lighting so if you're using a scanner you don't have to worry about lighting because the light is built into the scanner but if you are using a camera you want to try to get the picture of the image without any shadows all right, and what I did for this one is I went outside and I took this picture and it's a cloudy day which is perfect because it's real diffuse soft shadows and you're not going to notice any harsh lighting on the image when you take it so if you guys get a cloudy day run outside with all your scans or your sketchbook and just flip through it and, and take your pictures on that day so that at least they're captured and ready to be gone through like this alright so let's jump into Photoshop and here's the image that we started off with last time. It's the uh, de-skewed image that, that we worked on. And you'll notice that the lighting on this is, is pretty nice. So what I'm going to show you now is the steps that I go through to clean this up and create a presentation-ready image out of it. All right, so the first thing is the crop tool. Tap the C key on your keyboard in Photoshop. It's also this tool right here, number uh, five on the toolbar. And drag a box around the content that you want to keep and get it as tight as you need to we can always add more canvas back into it later by increasing our canvas size so this just cuts down on the amount of work that we're gonna to need to do you'll see like up in the corner here I'm, I'm gonna to have to clean that up a little bit later alright so once you've got that either double click or hit your return key on the keyboard and that will crop it down alright the next thing that you want to do is depending on if you want to keep the color in the image or not. I'll go ahead and keep the color for now, but you could convert the image to grayscale under image mode. You could convert it to black and white if you want to. Um, I like to keep stuff, you know, RGB as long as I can because it gives me more options in the future. So the next step that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to apply the levels command to it. And I like to use adjustment layers over here under the adjustments palette because they're non-destructive to the base image. I will end up saving the Photoshop file for this as a master file so that I could undo any of the stuff that I'm about to do now later on. So what I'm going to do is click on the levels and that you can see adds a levels layer down here into my document. And the quickest way to do this is to click on the little white eyedropper. If you've never seen these before, there's a white eyedropper, a 50% gray eyedropper, and there's a black eyedropper over here and what you want to use those for is click on an area in your image that is supposed to be 100 percent white alright so I'm gonna click here doesn't really matter where I click um, in this image you'll see you know even there's a little bit of haze up here so if I zoom in and pan you can see that there's some uh, texture to the paper in my sketchbook and so if you can click on an area you'll see if I click on these it actually says, oh, that's supposed to be white, I'll make it white. Well, you also need to be paying attention to the rest of the image to see if you accidentally are getting rid of any fidelity that you want to keep. So you can see that by clicking in different areas on my background, you know, it gets a little bit um, sharper, and it might get more sharp than you like. So click on an area that you feel like is a good representation. And so like this little bit of haze right here, I could clone that out in a minute. I'm not too worried about that stuff, but I don't really want to see any texture to the paper. So I'm going to click right in there, which gets rid of all that texture. So what that did was it pushed the image in the histogram over here. You can see I have a lot more white pixels in that image now. 
than I do any other color. Now the next thing that you'll want to do, um, if that isn't enough, is now you can start to tweak with the other two sliders here. You can start to tweak with the black pixels and you can start to tweak with the gray pixels because if you keep zooming in here, we don't just, I scan this in at RGB, right? So I don't just have black or white. I've got millions of different shades of colors in here. All right, so if I were to force this image, if I would have scanned it in as a bitmap, I would just have black or white, and I wouldn't have any of the fidelity of the pen as it went across the paper. It would just be black or white and be kind of harsh. So watch out for how harsh that you want to make that with that level tool. Now, the other thing you could do is click with the black one and click and say that area is supposed to be black. And so let me zoom back out. So even though I'm working with a color image, I just told it that all those blue pixels are supposed to be black. So again, depending on where you click, you're going to get a little bit different of a story. So more black, if I click somewhere else, less black, and you can see I can really screw up the image here if I keep doing this. So if I go back into my uh, history palette here, let me go back a, le a level. All right, so white could be anywhere black can be anywhere and so you want to click on like the darkest area of your image when you're working with black so maybe right in the middle of this bullet right here and that sends it mostly to black and so again if you don't like that you got to play around with it and get it exactly how you want um, but that's the fast way to clean up all the fuzz now the next thing that you could do if you don't want to um, let's say your scanner had a lot of dust in it um, what you're going to want to do is run the filter and you're going to want to run this on the background layer okay and usually what i do is i i like to unlock the black, the background layer the fastest way to unlock is double click and just click okay that unlocks the background layer and now i'm going to be able to run my um i'm going to go down to let's see where is it noise dust and scratches this is a great filter for removing scanner dust and scratches anything that could be on the the image itself we're not going to notice it in this image particularly but um, if, if you did have that kind of stuff this does a great job run it at very small numbers and run it multiple times if you want to just lightly brush over your image and get rid of dust and scratches all right um, what I like to do next is I like to actually clone tool out all of the extra little junk that maybe I don't want to see in the diagram all right so if I go over here to the clone tool the rubber stamp tool is another name for it. And um, what you do is you, if you use the right and left bracket key on your keyboard, that's the brushes, the brush size in your brush palette. You'll see that my brush palette right up here, if I go right bracket, left bracket, it's running through those. And it tries to stay, you know, if you're using a hard brush, it'll use, it'll stay with the hard brush. So if I go, shouldn't have clicked there. If I go left bracket, you'll see I'm still using the hard brush, getting bigger and smaller. And if I go with a soft brush, like this one, it'll keep the soft brush, but it'll get bigger and smaller. All right. So then what you're going to do is use your alt key or your option key, and you're going to click on an area in the image that you like, that you want to put over an image that you don't, over a piece of the image that you don't like. So I'm going to clone this area onto that area. And you see all I have to do is click and it takes a little bit of getting used to. So if you want to clean up your scan here and say, you know, I, I want to take some of this and then I can just paint right over that so it doesn't look like I'm such a messy sketcher and you can make people think that you sketch beautifully and you never make any mistakes by doing this. And so I'm just going to click and hide those areas. It takes a little bit of practice. You'll want to definitely get used to using this, but this is how you can give your uh, significant other a third eye on their forehead by using this clone tool in the in that beautiful photograph that they have on Facebook and then repost it on yours alright so that's how you clean up images by scanning and by using the levels tool and by using the dust and scratches filter and then by fi finishing up with the clone tool to get rid of any excess little ink marks or smudges or anything and you're good to go alright so that's it for this week's Method Cast Quickie. I will see you next time. Bye.